My name is Jane Fitch. I'm a 12-year cervical cancer survivor, and I'm also the Charlotte chapter leader for the National Cervical Cancer Coalition. Jane contracted cervical cancer due to having HPV. The vaccine was not available before 2006. Now it is. The HPV vaccine is a safe, effective way to protect females and males. My original diagnosis was in May 2011. I was rushed to the emergency room by ambulance after I had hemorrhaged for four days. On the fourth day, I realized that it was not a menopausal thing, but that there was something seriously wrong, which I didn't know what it was. Once I got to the hospital, I was admitted and they actually had to keep me in bed because I couldn't get out of bed without passing out. I was taken to the operating room where they were trying to stop the bleeding. They still couldn't stop the bleeding, even with a DNC. They called in a specialist to cauterize the pelvic area. I woke up in ICU with my surgeon sitting beside me to inform me that I had stage 2B cervical cancer and a tumor that was over 10 centimeters. And my treatment consisted of 36 rounds of external radiation, six chemotherapy treatments, and then I had about a week long stay in the hospital where I had internal radiation where they implant radiation rods right up next to the tumor. After about two weeks, I was able to go back to the hospital and I had a radical hysterectomy. In between that time of treatment, overall I had 17 units of blood. I was in the hospital a lot. I was unable to really eat or drink much. I was dehydrated and I lost over 30 pounds in about eight weeks. Even though Jane wanted to help, she was still hesitant to recommend the HPV vaccine to others, including her boys. But she educated herself with facts and realized that the HPV vaccine's benefits far outweigh the risks of not being vaccinated. The recommendation is that they receive the HPV vaccine starting at ages 11 or 12 years, up to 26 years. In males, the most common cancer that's caused by HPV is throat cancer. HPV can also cause anal and penile cancer. So after I joined the National Cervical Cancer Coalition, one of the things that they talked about quite a bit was the HPV vaccine. And when I first heard about the HPV vaccine as a member of the National Cervical Cancer Coalition, I was not for it. I did not want to promote it. I did not want to talk about it with people. I would do everything else that the National Cervical Cancer Coalition stood for, but I didn't want to talk to people about the vaccine because I didn't feel that it was a good thing. However, upon doing a lot of research and talking to a lot of people and really understanding what the vaccine was, and the real truth behind the vaccine and what was truth and what wasn't truth and the benefits of having the vaccine, I completely changed my viewpoint on, on it. Protection from mouth, throat, genital, and anal cancer. HPV vaccine protects both males and females. I think it's well worth five seconds to get a shot versus having months, maybe years of cancer treatment that may or may not save your life when we know that in communities that use the vaccine extensively and most people have been vaccinated with the HPV vaccine, that cancer rates have dropped to almost nothing. So I think that the benefits of the vaccine 
are much greater than not having it. And I would highly encourage you to talk to your medical professionals, do your research, and find out more if you have questions about the vaccine. All young males and females should be vaccinated. For more information, visit partnershipformaleyouth.org.